I'm not teaching good side of life. So I had to figure out a way when I came on in 2016 of teaching you what life really is for the majority of us is hell. And so while people love to show you the cars and the house and the vacations, and all that's good, all that's happy. I'm gonna show you the side that I know most of you are going through. And people hide very well. I don't wanna hide anymore. I hid for 24 years. So that's why now I told you, we can talk about whatever you want. Because as human beings, the one we, the, the, the first thing we have to learn, I also stuttered real bad growing up. So if you hear me stutter every now and then, it's because that was part of my life also. So it's funny, human beings want to show you the best side and they want to hide the worst side. For me, I'm going to teach you how to be vulnerable because that's the only way you fix yourself. You don't fix yourself by coming out here and me selling you some books. That's why I don't have them. I forgot them. I'm glad people got something from the book. I want you to learn that the only way you grow is how to look at yourself and say, okay, like I did. Table longer than this. What the f I have to do to get somewhere? There was nothing good on there. Nothing. Yeah, I love playing basketball. I left that out. That's something I love to do. I don't care about that. That, that didn't make the fucking list. Because the list that I had to live by was, it, was the very list that was to get me at this table with you. To talk to you, to the normal human beings which I once was, about how you can get somewhere and how it looks. It looks very ugly. There's no fucking passion. There's no fucking motivation. There's no, oh my God, man. I f this is, no. It's every day of your life just doing. No passion, no discipline, no motivation. Yeah, all these words, I hate people. I hate that so many people fucking use these words now because it, it, it's watered. It's someone sitting in a room by themselves and they figure themselves out and say, God, this is gonna fucking suck. Where's passion when you're 300 pounds? Where's the motivation when you can't read and write? Where is it? So how did this happen? I just fucking did. I just did. I said, maybe at the end of this journey, there'll be something there for me. If not, I can read. If not, I'm 180 fucking pounds. There's no, there's, 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 there's no magic potion. There's no, oh, let me wake up and look at some shit. No, all those words are overused. They're bullshit. It's all bullshit. Just do. You're living. How do you want to live? How do you want to die? How do you want to fucking be remembered? That's, that's it. That's it. Period. We all have one thing in common. We are here, stuck in the game of life, often subject to the whims of forces beyond our control. But we never train for it. We dedicate ourselves to external goals, whether they are rooted in fitness, or school or work, as if they are isolated events, somehow disconnected from the totality of our lives, when everything we do is an opportunity to get better at the game of life itself. My life and my commitment to do what needs to be done, I am a student of life. I carry around a notebook. I keep logs. I study all the upswings and down currents of my days as if the final exam is tomorrow because we all have an exam tomorrow. Whether we realize it or not, every interaction, each task is a reflection of your mindset, values, and future prospects. It's an opportunity to be the person you've always wanted to be. You don't have to have survived trauma or become a physical beast to train for life. We've all been challenged physically, emotionally, and intellectually, and we've all failed. Don't be shy about digging through your lost archives. No matter how irrelevant those experiences seem now, they count because they were all dry runs for whatever comes next. This awareness that everything we do is merely training for the next episode is like a filter that expands your perception. When you get assigned something at work or school that you don't wanna do, step into a conflict you didn't see coming, 
someone close to you gets sick or dies or a relationship falters, you will see these challenges as new chapters in life's textbook, which you can study to make sure that the next season of loss won't be such a kick in the knees. Not just for you, but more so for the people around you. We all know that training is required to make the cut in competitive sports. Get into the best schools and compete for the most coveted jobs because that's what it takes to be prepared. We all have a voice in our head. Some of us are very spiritual, some of us are not, but we all have this voice in you're doing this is wrong, don't mm -hmm. do that. The more you don't listen to that voice, the further that voice gets away from your head. Some people call it the Holy Spirit, some people call it God, some monks, whatever, whatever you call it, it's yeah. there. Mm -hmm. We all have it. Mm -hmm. It's the right or wrong voice. But the more we don't listen to it, the more that voice goes away. Mm -hmm. The only voice you hear is yourself. Mm -hmm. we all, when the only voice you hear is yourself, you're wrong. There's a voice that guides you through life. When sometimes it's guiding you in a direction that you don't want to go, mm -hmm. that's usually the right place to go. It's that uncomfortable place. So that voice is always talking to me, but we don't listen to it. I listen to it. And when I start getting anxious, nervous, like I've done, we all know when we've done too much because it's telling us I'm getting tired, I'm wearing down, but we, we go, we go, we go. I start talking to my fiance, hey, I'm doing too much. You start now, like, like I did in Hell Week, like I do all the time, the one second decision. It's that decision when your mind starts to get so amped up, whenever you can't hear yourself think, you gotta slow down. Whenever you're living off a schedule, every day is a schedule, every day is a schedule, you have no time for yourself. When you start, and we all know it, I don't have time for this anymore, I don't have time for that anymore. That's when your mind and your body are saying, think about that. I'm neglecting my fiance, I'm neglecting my disciplines of life, I'm neglecting my reading, my learning, my, my workouts, my, my, my diet. When you start neglecting all of that, you neglect one of them. You can, you can neglect all of them a long time. It's going to haunt you. Mm. When you start seeing that, my God, I haven't eaten right in a long time. I haven't been sleeping right in a long time. It can only be one of those things to take you off. So I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my, my, my disciplines of life. And when I started to get too far away from them, it's a hard stop. Mm -hmm. Because what made me me are the self, not just disciplines, the self-disciplines of life. Mm -hmm. And those are always in front of you, if you have any. They're always in front of you. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so that's my hard stop. Bad men obey their lusts as servants obey their masters. A forbidden fruit is the sweetest. If it weren't so pleasant to submit to your urges, nobody would ever struggle with self-discipline. However, notwithstanding how much pleasure it can bring, it's important to see the temptation for what it is. Your enemy on the path toward freedom. Obeying your lusts enslaves you, while rejecting them increases your freedom. The reward you'll get for not succumbing to your temptations will more than make up for the price you pay today for missing out on the instant gratification. Self-disciplined people may appear to some as if they were the ones being enslaved. After all, they're the ones whose lives are so limited. They don't get to eat junk food. They follow a strict routine, deliberately expose themselves to discomfort and reject what society considers the spice of life. Gluttony, laziness, and engaging in other vices. What the critics fail to see is that through the rejection of those temptations, the self-discipline become the masters of their lives. They serve the goals chosen by themselves instead of fleeting, spontaneous temptations. They choose to forego temporary satisfactions for deeper, more lasting ones later on. In the meantime, in the long haul, the people who fail to control their urges or rather, don't even try to control them, fail to control their lives, manipulated by the temptations like a marionette. The loafer believes he is enjoying life, but sooner or later he must face disillusion, since self-discipline shines in the long term and often doesn't seem to provide any benefits in the short term. You may be tempted to believe that people who are loafing around have it better. While you're watching your finances like a hawk, 
They spend money they don't have and show off with all the new cool gadgets. While you're eating a salad and washing it down with a cup of green tea, they're eating a bag of delicious potato chips and gulping down sugary cans of Coke. While you feel like throwing up during your workout from trying to squeeze out one more rep, they squeeze more mayo out of the bottle to put it on the french fries they gorge on while watching their favorite TV shows. It might seem they have it better, but sooner or later, the person exposing himself or herself to discomfort for the sake of achieving their long-term goals will come out on top, while the people loafing around will get to feel the negative consequences of their laziness. Irresponsible spenders will realize they're on the brink of bankruptcy. Potato chip addicts will be diagnosed with diabetes. The inactive TV fans will start taking hypertension medication. You, on the other hand, will look back at your past sacrifices and smile, happy that you've never succumbed to the temptation to take it easy and loaf around. That's why I don't own a car. I don't own a place. Nothing. What I realized is all I wanted in my life was look at that that accountability mirror and be proud of and everything else went away while you need money to be successful you need money to live you need money money does buy a form of happiness because without it you're miserable but once I realized it, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean for me what makes you happy achievement reaching goals accomplishing things that I thought were impossible to accomplish because while I don't smile all the time there's this feeling inside of me that no one very few people have very few people have because when you come from where I came from nothing and you make something out of nothing the feeling it stays with you all day long and it allows you to be who you want to be in front of anybody the only thing more infectious than a good attitude is a bad one. The more you dwell on the negative, the weaker you feel, and that weakness infects those around you. However, the reverse is also true. I knew that if I could control my attitude and redirect my attention, I'd gain control of the entire situation. I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised that my knee gave out. Now, it was on me to learn what I could from the setback adapt and move forward. It's an unwritten natural law of the universe that you will be tested. You will get smacked in the fucking face. A hurricane will land on your head. It's inevitable for all of us. Yet we are not formally taught how to handle unexpected adversity. We have sex education, fire drills, active shooter drills and curriculum on the dangers of alcohol and drugs. But there is no rug just got pulled out under you class nobody teaches how to think act and move when disappointment bad news malfunction and disaster inevitably strike all the advice floods in only after we are already lying dazed on the canvas which means it's up to you to cultivate your own strategy and have the discipline to practice it mine is simple no matter what life serves me I say Roger that most people think Roger that simply means order received. However, in the military, some people infuse Roger with a bit more intention and define it as received. Order given, expect results. When used that way, it is so much more than an acknowledgement. It's an accelerant. It bypasses the over analytical brain and stimulates action because in some situations thinking is the enemy I'm not suggesting that you should follow every order like a robot after you've been knocked down it's important to take some time to understand what happened and strategize your way forward but you also must act if you stay stalled out sifting through the wreckage you may find that you've been swallowed by it we all love comeback stories because they teach us that setbacks have the power to propel us forward to our greatest successes, but your fate depends on your approach. After an injury or failure, 
Your mind wants to either spin out into overthinking or fall back into numbness and complacency. And it takes practice to short circuit that process. Roger, that is a ticket back to your life, no matter what happens. You may be laid off, run down, flunked out, cut, or dumped. You could be a stressed out, bullied young kid, an overweight veteran with no prospects, or simply handed a pair of crutches and told to sit tight on the sidelines for as long as it takes to heal. The answer is always Roger that. Scream it out loud. Tell them all that you heard what they had to say and that they can expect your very best in return. And don't forget to smile. A smile that reminds them that you are most dangerous when you're cornered. That is how you respond to a setback. It's the most efficient way to deal with adversity and come out clean.